spoke up. Now just hold on now. Like we said last week, have you ever been excited about doing something and somebody told you you couldn't? It ain't a Republican thing. It ain't a Democrat thing. It ain't a Libertarian thing. Because see, I believe in freedom. I believe if you want to walk out of here lost, that's your choice. You want to live any way you want to live, if I'm going to be a free American, I've got to give you the right to be a free American. But here's one thing where we part ways on. I still believe in God. And I can live any way I want to live down here. But at the end of the road, I'm going to face God. And I'm going to give an account of my choices and my decisions and my life. He's watching. I've said this many times and we're not going to go down this rabbit trail, but I know that God is in charge. He's God. But I believe that he laid down his control when he put us in this old environment of sin and put a free will in our mind. We can determine our own destiny. Even in Jeremiah 29, 11, I've said before you, I said, I think good thoughts of you. I want you to be at peace. I don't want you to be in trouble. I want you to have prosperity, not adversity. For I have an expected end for you. One of these days, it's a judgment I believe with all my soul. God's going to show me what could have been had I trusted him in my decisions and choices. And then had I decided to fight the good fight of faith and hang in there and sacrifice myself and give up myself for the greater glory of his grace and the good of others, oh, it's hard to tell what God might could have done. I ain't satisfied here, are you? We could all do better. Don't be so hard on other people. What about me? But one of these days, God will resume ultimate eternal control. And the God who's always been in charge will take up his ultimate control again and I'll give an account before him of everything that I've done, of every idle thought, of everything done. And at the judgment seat of Christ, I'm apt to suffer loss. And at the great white throne judgment, dear sinner friend, you will give an account of rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. And what did you get in his place? My. How much does it take to get you to sell out? How much does it take to get you to worship some other little God? How much does it take for you to say, no, we can't take those giants up there. It wasn't so much that they really meant we can't. That was a lie. What they were really saying was, we don't want to. And we're not. Show them the word of God. We're not. Read the scripture to them. Well, that's back a long time ago. That doesn't apply to me. Because <laughs> I'm my own God. The ultimate sin of idolatry is when I elevate myself among, above God and everyone else. And it's my way or the highway, brother. You better get humble quick. Because the very thing that antagonizes God is pride. You want to condemn the dope head? You don't want to condemn those that live in life like you think they shouldn't? Where will their level be at the judgment? But that one that is lost and worshiping at the altar of the false god of pride, that's the worst. You say, really? Yes. Boy, it's getting awful quiet in here, ain't it? Somebody done got mad at Brother Mike. He said, that low-down rascal just said I was worse than some old dopey. 
We've all sinned. Don't you dare look down on other people. Don't you dare try to put anybody down. Because one of these days we will all stand at the judgment and give an account. I ain't going to give an account to you. You're not going to give an account to me. But each of us individually will give an account to God Almighty. We can't go up there. We're not going up there. There are giants in the land. We're just grasshoppers. Why did you bring us out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? Moses, we don't want nothing to do with this. And they didn't know. But when God tried to show them himself by sending them Moses, they didn't like Moses. (laughs) They thought God should have sent somebody better. They got out to the Red Sea. God said, I'm going to show them who I am. They were too squawking about dying. They were too scared to death about dying. And when they saw that pathway through that sea, obviously it was just an escape from death. It wasn't a pathway to the glory of God. Somebody needs, I need to hear this. If you got saved just to get out of hell, (laughs) I mean, that was part of it. But there's a whole lot more to it. God got you out of that to get you into all of this. <laughs> and he's telling them, Joe, I got you out of there. Here I am now, Sue. You're out of the wilderness, and now you're free people, and I'm with you. I'm the God who brought you out. I'm the God who got you over, and I'm right here right now with you. Boy, they praised him for a little while. Three days later, another challenge, another quiz, another test at Mara, and they failed again. Elam, they failed again. God's long-suffering, but he won't always strive with man. And when those 10, stim- listen, listen carefully. What I say and how I act, I do influence other people. That's part of the account I'm going to give one of these days. And I may go up to somebody and maybe they're just happy and they're enjoying, you know, things that are going on and they're just, you know, getting along pretty good. And then I go up to them and I say, what do you think about that? Hey, there's all-knowing smart guy. They didn't, wasn't thinking anything about it till your footsteps was guided by the devil and you got over and you got bringing all that stuff up. Now they're thinking about it. They weren't that. See, we're supposed to be ministers of mercy and light and love and goodness. That's who Jesus is and that's what he's all about. Why, we can't go up there. There were lots of other people standing around. Caleb had just told them, look at all this. It's ours. We can go up right now and take it. And some of them were getting excited and they were anxious. They were saying, oh boy, I'm going up there and get me some of them grapes. (laughs) Some of them, their grapes. (laughs) I'm going to go up there and I'm going to get some of them pomegranates. I want to go up there and see that brook on the high ground of Hebron. Well, oh boy, we're going to go. Here we go. And then they heard people over there, the commotion. If I get somebody's attention, I hope to God, Brenda, I'll try to get their attention on the Lord and not me. Because if I get somebody's attention on the Lord, oh my, (laughs) he's going to take them on up to Hebron right now. (laughs) But then the others started. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now we know Korah here and we know this other, these other people. Now we better listen to what they're saying. And we better get this thing together. So we're not going to go. Why didn't you just leave us in Egypt, Moses? And when God heard that, that was a deadline. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, when you step over that deadline, I don't know where it is. 
I'm not smart enough to know all about it. But when Almighty God, when you hear the word Ichabod come through the loving lips of God and seal it down upon your head, you're going to wonder. God's still a God of love, but he told them, he said, you were gone 40 days. I'm going to put a year to each day. 